Welcome to our biology review. Remember to do what your teacher wants you to do. I have asked my students to highlight things in their textbook and to master that material for the test. But welcome anyhow, I'm glad you're here. My name is Daryl Barnes. We are reviewing biology. Pretty basic review. Biology is the study of what? Life. Thank you, study of life, lovely. And there are some characteristics of life that I would like to talk about. Reproduction, growth and development, energy use, order, response. Things that are living have cells. Evolution changes are considered to be a part of life. So why is it that a virus is not considered living? Why is that? doesn't display the properties of life and one of them is that it doesn't have cells it's not made out of cells right that was one thing and it can't reproduce on its own remember it's an obligate parasite that means that it has to have a host to do its thing okay let's talk about levels of biological organization I'm gonna go from little to big okay so say these after me Adam Adam. Molecule. Molecule. Organelle. Organelle. Cell. Cell. Tissue. Tissue. Organ. Organ. Organ system. Organ system. Organism. Organism. Population. Population. Community. Community. Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Biosphere. Biosphere. Lovely. In the past, when I heard the word population, it was always a species or a group of individuals who can mate and make babies. That has been my that has been my understanding in the past of what is a population. Remember that the biosphere includes the earth and all of its environments. And we're talking about everything that's living, biotic, and, in, and everything that's non-living, which is called abiotic. When we talk about the scientific method, uh, say these after me, let's get the order correctly. Observation. Observation. Question. Question. Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Experiment. Experiment. Results. Results. Conclusion. Conclusion. Okay, so which one of these would be called a pro proposed explanation? Everybody said what? Hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis, thank you. This is something that has not been pro proven false. It's possibly been replicated by a lot of scientists. What is it called? Everybody say theory. 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 Okay, very good. All right, let's talk about controlled experiments for just a few minutes. In a control experiment, the thing that we like to do is we like to hold all of the variables the same and just change one thing. And that, by the way, is called the manipulated variable. And we usually plot that on which axis, the one that goes this way. Which one is that? X-axis. Everybody say X-axis. X-axis. And the responding variable usually goes on the vertical axis, which is the Y-axis. Y That's kind of how this usually rolls. <clears throat> Remember that if we do a single blind experiment, it means that thing being tested does not have a clue about what's going on. If it's double blind, then that means the experimenter and the test subject, both, both people don't know exactly what is happening, only enough to get the job done, and that helps to reduce bias and helps to reduce the placebo effect. And remember, the placebo effect is the deal where a person might get better just because they expect to get better. Or if, uh, if an experimenter passed a pill to this person and smiled and then passed another person and didn't smile, then it might be a clue, a tip off, that the person who got the pill with the smile, that this was the real deal. This is the treatment and not just a sugar pill or placebo. The next one is, is rather painful to you and to me Sometimes I think that just because I've tried something in my own personal diet, that it, that's, it, it is a good thing. I'm not arguing that point. But just because it works for me doesn't mean it works for everyone. And so basically that's called anecdotal evidence. And so part of the power of doing good sci scientific research is that enough people are tested that this result can be extrapolated into the general population. That's what we hope for. And another thing that guards against bad science is peer review. So when we have fellow scientists who look at our work and evaluate it, then they can detect if there are flaws in the work. 
Primary sources are like sources on, on the internet that are original research articles and things like that. Secondary sources are sites that just compile information and present it to us. I appreciate secondary resources personally. I appreciate compilations of information so I can get a quick idea and then sometimes I will move and look at an actual research paper as a verification. <clears throat> Remember that when we make a graph with bar graphs that these are just comparisons of categories and when we put error bars this just basically tells uh, a range of values that fall into a 95% confidence interval. It's a statistical analysis. Pie charts uh, convey percentages. Remember, as we're finishing this kind of this intro look, that evolution is considered to be an overarching idea in biology. And there are a couple of ways to look at this. There is microevolution and then there's macroevolution. And remember, that we see readily, we see microevolution, we see changes in viruses and changes in bacteria. That's why you have to get a new flu shot every year. Hello. <laughs> Macroevolution is that theme that, that maybe your grandparents and I saw. I know, and I'm, I know I'm being a little contriving here by saying a tadpole or, or, a, or a bacterium or a, something small to a tadpole to a fish to a lizard to a monkey and a human. I know that's not exactly accurate, just bear with me, but you've seen pictures that kind of look like that. That is macroevolution. And that is has been the real challenge, is to try to prove uh, interspecies. It appears that it's very simple for changes to occur in species. So that will be a theme that we will be tracing as we go along the way. And remember that our favorite star in our solar system is the what? Sun. The sun, and that is considered to be the ultimate source of energy. And that's what helps bring some order into this closed system that we have uh, called the Earth. And actually, that's a good thing. It's actually not exactly enclosed because the very fact that sun's coming into it there's an outside influence in it. it seems kind of closed, but the sunlight makes it not so. All right, thank you and keep coming back.